So I'm not going to insult you by making us in assumptions about what you do, but just to simply talk about what we do at Nottingham Trent to try and, and move artwork forward. Um, we are a, a non-pathway fine art course, which is distinct from the European Classen or Atelier systems, which very simply means it's not expert-led. Um, the tutors are all artists, in fact, um, but they teach all aspects of the curriculum rather than having a technical role. So it's not just about imparting from your practice to uh, um, a student who will kind of mimic you until they've developed enough that they can kind of destroy you. Um, but instead, it's a sharing process. Um, and this means also that the students don't direct their work towards a technically specialised or expert viewer. They're encouraged to develop their work with one another through this crit that we call show and listen that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. Um, but to contextualise it, to say that personally, I'm, I, I suppose, in my um, academic or intellectual background, very much a product of the linguistic turn in philosophy, semiotics and after. And I'm going to simplify that in this context by saying that, that for me, that means that meaning is a product of a relationship rather than a property of objects. Um, this seems like, in a way, a very obvious thing to say, but the consequences of that are huge, and I think we're, in art, still working that through. Meaning doesn't generate outwards from objects like heat from a radiator, um, but it's, it's held in the space between objects and the viewer. Um, and I believe that that's as true of a representational object, which could be writing or it could be a picture, as it is of a non-representational one, like a table or a chair. Uh, meaning is, is, is something in the space between us and the world. Um, and I think that's a, a, a very profound um, thing to, have to work through in a lifetime, really. Um, this means that to find out what something means, i.e. your work if you are an artist, and I use that in the widest sense, you go out into the world in which it makes its existence, rather than by diving deeper and deeper into the object. Um, the, in language, the best example of this is the difference between etymology and usage. Etymology tells you an enormous amount about the history of a word, but its meaning lies in its usage. It lies in its, its being in the present moment as it's used, um, like the words that are coming out of my mouth now. Um, the model of the crit at NTU, it actually closely resembles what they do here at Goldsmiths, um, although they've been doing it for quite a while in Nottingham. Um, the idea is that the, the student artist shows but doesn't speak. Um, they listen as the group talk about their experience of the work. Uh, that means that the artist doesn't accompany the work and explain it. This is very, very important. They don't control its reception other than through presenting the work. Um, that, and this, the idea behind this is that the explanation isn't a substitute for the work. It doesn't become a substitute for the work. Um, I often tell the students that whatever medium an artist works in, in the end their medium is the attention of other people. Um, it's a fundamental thought for me, that idea that allows me to think, I hope, across a number of different art forms because I am not just you know, a painter teaching painters or a performer teaching performers. Um, but a group of people working in different media are, are sharing a space and finding a way to have a dialogue, as um, we, we've mentioned already. This also becomes an exercise in the group developing an interpretation. So as well as the artist hearing versions or descriptions of their work that are neither true or untrue, um, they are the sum of the available knowledge in the room. But this also means that the group are developing uh, their, their critical language for thinking about their reading, their understanding, um, what I want to really clarify about this, that it isn't like a popularity contest or it isn't like a new Labour focus group where you then go and adjust your policy to please the, uh, the viewer um, a little more, um, but it allows the artist to understand the, get, the gap between their intention and the reception of the work. Um, and that, again, for me, is a fairly fundamental concept. I think any artist, I'd like to imagine this is as useful a concept for a writer as it is for an artist working in traditional sort of visual art medium. The idea that, that, that the reception is the work of the work is where its meaning lies, and that's always in play. That, that is the sum of the readings of it. Um, I don't know how I'm doing for time, but I'm, the, the reason for these, these other bullet points is just to talk about two things that I've done as a kind of refinement of this basic show and listen idea, which is that the work gets discussed by a group without the artist intervening. Um, is some exercises that I've done with the students, uh, the first of which I've just summarised by It's Your Practice, the idea that you speculate that you are the artist who's made this piece of work, 
um, and you talk at length about other works that you've made, um, which involves you trying to, I suppose, imagine, to construct in your mind um, a practice from which that work comes. So rather than it being a single object, it's part of a body of work coming from a particular person. Um, and uh, I think it's a, it's a really useful task for the imagination to do that. The second of them, quite close to this, um, but is the idea um, that this is actually your piece of work and that other people in the group will then question you about why you've made it in the way you've made. This is with the artist who has actually made it listening. Um, and again, it involves you speculating um, into the position so your reading then becomes uh, uh, about you being the author of that piece, the, the artist who's made it. Um, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a really interesting thing for the artist to hear another person questioned playing the role of themselves being the person who's created the work. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. I've never seen it attempted with creative writing, um, but I think it'd be a really interesting thing to do. Um, above all, I think one of the, the reasons for doing this is to remove the ego from the process of making. And I, I really identified with a lot of the kind of creative and frustrating dilemmas that were being put to us before the break um, and understanding that. And I think perhaps it's one way to work as a group and to work in a dialogic way it, it is to try and conceive of the object separately from you um, at a certain stage. Obviously, we know it, it, it is a product of your singularity in time and space. Um, but in actual fact, as an object, it's something that's out in the world and separate from you. So being able to defamiliarise it, make it distant from you. Um, I think that's me done, really. Um, I've done a slightly whistle-stop thing. But thank you all very much for listening. And again, for Andrew.